If you found this video, thank you for giving me a shot. Let's talk about the Vision Pro and what I think it's going to be and where it's going. And uh, full disclosure, I did pre-order one. So the process itself to get through it, I'm sure you've heard 6,000 different people say it, but I'm just going to say it one more time. I think the facial scan system and all the nuances of finding your lenses if you need them, et cetera, et cetera, although they were a little stringent with it, I think it was a good idea to at least remind people of that. I'm going to skip all of that because that's not why you're here. If you found this little video, that means you've gone down this rabbit hole a bit and you're either already pre-ordered or you're looking hard or you're thinking about, hey, maybe not now, but when this thing goes on sale or the next generation of it or maybe next, you know, I'm putting something together. I respect that and I respect your time. So I'd like to talk about a couple things that I think the Apple Vision Pro is and is not. And if you appreciate this type of content, don't forget to like and subscribe, all that stuff, I'm done. All right, got my little speech out of the way. So the biggest thing to remember is if you're coming from a VR perspective, if you're already a VR user, that's where my bread and butter was since 2017, my old Vive OG Vive barely holding together, a lot of modifications to keep it running, and my beautiful, well-kept index, because I never exercised in it, more on that in a minute for the AVP, um, have taught me a few things, and I'll go into those probably in the future, but to stick to the Apple Vision Pro, if you're coming from a VR perspective, there's a couple things you want to keep in mind. It's not really meant for the current uses of VR until somebody figures workarounds. So right now, Apple's kind of got a bit of a wall garden going on, and that's probably a good thing because we're in a highly experimental phase for the Vision Pro. And it's currently devoted to spatial computing. Now, spatial computing, regardless of what you want to call it, is supposed to be something completely different where you can enjoy using your pass-through systems and be able to have virtual items, virtual screens, all sorts of things rendered in while you're doing other things. So while you're sitting on the couch or while you're sitting in the park or something like that, uh, you can do that. And it's been heavily implied, but we're still waiting to prove it, uh, when you're sitting on a plane. And that use case is more on that in a minute because I will want to mention something here that even with all this money spent, you need to worry about with that. But um, on the topic of a VR user, all those things are, if you're sitting there going, why, why does Reggie keep talking about uh, planes and sitting on couches and stuff like that? That's not usually what you do with VR. Well, that's kind of the target for this initial Apple Vision Pro spatial computer. You know, it's not just a mantra. It's kind of meant for the layperson, people that are not comfortable. They don't have their VR legs to use the old up is not jump uh, line uh, yet. And uh, it's not really meant to be like an intensive um, Beat Saber like type gameplay or playing onward or <laughs> uh, anything like that. Um, I would venture a guess that somebody's going to have workarounds for a virtual desktop or some other methodology to get us into VR chat, um, probably shortly after it comes out. But until then, and who knows what limitations that'll have and bugs that'll have, um, it's not really meant for that. And one of the big nuances for a VR user is the lack of controllers. So there is some support for, of all things, a Sony PlayStation controller that they have uh, for in the sale area as an add-on item. And they also talk about using Apple uh, touchpads. Um, so um, Brad Lynch from Sadly It's Bradley mentions that, that he's going to be trying to use an Apple Magic touchpad. Uh, there's also Apple, you know, wireless keyboards that they're trying to push. I don't think the answer is really in any of those technologies. Maybe the Sony PlayStation controller for some of the gaming that is included or going to soon be after uh, included as more people embrace and adapt iPad level games to this new technology. Uh, but a uh, platform, I should say. But uh, more importantly, uh, the the usage of um, these techs needs to be brought together into one sleek, configurable thing. So 
they, um, from what I'm hearing from many sources that have reviewed it or commented on the, doing like a first review, you know, like an initial little time in it or something, they stress that there's no discussion of mice. So no use of an Apple mouse or something like that. So if there is no mice and we are stuck with touchpads and gestures and you, and you need to do professional work, it may make sense to mix gestures with something else. A wireless keyboard with a touchpad next to it would be the ideal solution. And if Apple won't do it, I'm sure somebody will have a workaround for it eventually, a third party uh, technology uh, that will figure out the way. Um, but I, I think that's probably going to be the cleanest solution. Uh, we might even see a return of other unique uh, technologies that are a little more left field. Uh, <laughs> I think of the little knob that's in the um, old laptops, like the old the old IBM slash Lenovo uh, ThinkPads and stuff, where you could rest your palm across the keyboard and you could use your um, your, your thumb uh, to operate like key, you know keys of a mouse. But I think that would be limited because there is no mice yet, unless somebody. Uh, figures things out. I think the, the big specter in the room is, is anybody going to have the courage to jailbreak something this significantly expensive? And I think the answer is probably, it's not going to be me, <laughs> but probably somebody out there, some some incredible soul will figure out a way to have technologies uh, operate with this. And I, I hope it doesn't have to get to that. I hope it gets to a point where there's a framework to integrate different types of controllers, different types of inputs into this system. And this gets back to VR uh, to allow for people to do many different types of experiences in this that may be uh, VR based experiences or at least kind of studio in that realm. Now, this thing is the most powerful HMD you can get your hands on right now, at least on a consumer level that you can just buy off the shelf. Um, and as, as at its launch, it will be the most powerful thing ever made and, and, and that, that can process for itself. Uh, but it does have data technology. If you know about the MacBooks, you, you know about the M2 chip. If you know about, you know, if you can start putting yourself together that this is a super powered iPad in its processing capacity with 16 gigs of RAM and a special second chip that all that's doing is managing getting all the light to you when you need it. Um, that's me paraphrasing a lot of information just so I don't go down a rabbit hole. There are many other videos you can go through if you want to go through that exact topic, but I'm trying to do like a practical, what are people missing that I'm, I'm not seeing in all the videos I've watched. And, um, also from a perspective of a VR community developer. So I make a lot of mods and content and things like that. Uh, and this is an exciting thing for me to move into spatial computing, I look forward to it, and most importantly, uh, it's a very fledgling group of folks that's going into it. So if you're not already into, like, heavy into VR or, you know, especially into willing to do mods and willing to do different types of things to make things work, and you're not used to that kind of shoestring capacity to, to really eke out the most out of your headset, um, I think that the AVP will have a limited use case at first. There are a lot of mo mods out there uh, th that are being done, but instead of mods, let me flip this on, on its head a little bit, they call them apps. And <laughs> those apps are on development. And there are a variety of great discords and reddits, the subreddits that are handling the Apple Vision Pro, and they are f chock full of app ideas and app development right as we speak. We have a lively discussion going on on the Apple Vision Pro uh, subreddit Discord, and all of them are free for you to join. You don't need to be a developer. You don't need to have purchased it, be purchasing it on, on day one or 10 or whatever. Um, you can join in. And if you're excited about a specific topic, say if you're in the medical field and you want to be able to get into training aids or, you know, like, for example, if you run, if you, if you run, a, if you push a medical card around and you're good to go and you want to know, you know, is, hey, can I think of this as part of my training regimen? Well, there's people talking about those things. Now, I'm not saying replace it with anything official. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that for your own personal use. And for your own interests, whether they're professional or not, there's a variety of very interesting apps. And the developers right now for this brand new platform are itching to hear from the variety of the community. And 
you may already be a power user for this thing and you don't even know it. Uh, so if you already are heavily into the iPhone or the iPad type, uh, type work and you find yourself spending a lot of time both whether it's for work, whether it's for home, whether it's for school, and you find yourself using a variety of different apps, some of those will be integrated into Apple Vision Pro very quickly into the, to the Vision OS that runs it, and many of them won't be. So uh, this is important that you really want to advocate for those important apps that work for you. And in some cases, there are apps that you will probably need to get to know. And um, especially, for example, streaming content. So the media has recently put a lot of pressure, a lot of pressure on going into, is the Apple Vision Pro um, going to have Netflix, going to have streaming capacity at all, or all these different products, aside from, of course, what Apple supports, you know, Apple TV or something like that. And the answer is is actually a roundabout way, yes. So for example, I, I had the pleasure of chatting with the Moon developers um, from Moon Home, and they said they're fully integrating in their streaming capacity. And their streaming capacity does multiple different services, including some that you would be surprised by. Now, I'm not advocating for just them. I just happened to run into them and speak with them online. And um, I don't know them from Adam other than that. They have very polite conversations and uh, great chat with the community. And they answered a lot of questions of ours. And they had some ideas about whether they're going to go into uh, calling it a, you know, a spatial home or the Apple, uh, sorry, a uh, moon home, spatial computer, or <laughs> spatial computer for Apple Vision Pro or something like that. Like basically focusing on the moon home aspect or the spatial computing home system basically kind of rebranding and then having moon just added at the end and um i'm if you see my my, my avatar I, i'm a little partial to moons i'm a little partial to luna uh so i'm always on team moon but um i can tell you that these type of technologies someone will serve the gap will be found the gap will be met so if you let me kind of move into that realm more about We've covered if you're from the VR perspective, if you're from the layman perspective, whether it's professional, private, school, et cetera, you know, are you looking at for this to use in your program to share amongst people? Um, there are some limitations to if you are excited about this still. And one of the ones I want to start with is discussing the apps again. So I discussed all these different apps. Some of them require subscriptions. And you may already have some that are going to seamlessly transition and some you're going to want to start budgeting to cut off that subscription and go to the, to go to another product or purchase another product outright, you know, or use a free product even. I mean, I hope you can find one. That'd be great. Uh, that works with ABP for doing the same need. So fulfilling the same productivity apps, fulfilling the same creativity apps, you may have to find yourself another solution. So be careful about your subscriptions if you are into subscribing to apps. This particularly applies to professionals who find themselves using an, uh, you know, an iPad Pro and they're fully maxed out and their iPad, sorry, the brand new iPhone Maxes and such, and they're doing all sorts of interesting things. And they're really running these machines to the max. Uh, these portable devices uh, suddenly will might not transition well to AVP. They may work out great. And I hope every app you use does, but I doubt it. So especially at the beginning, we're, remember, we're at a, a rocky start. We're at the beginning of this process of this spatial computing era for Apple. And um, it's going to be a little rough, but you will find solutions for every single product you can possibly think of, every niche you can think of, especially if you advocate yourself for free on these, on these places and, and try to find solutions working together with the community. Um, so... That being said, like I said, you may need to purchase a few new apps. You may need to look at what subscriptions you already have. If you're doing professional subscriptions, you may need to look at having more or cutting off the old ones and starting new with a new product, possibly, or purchasing another app. And on to another topic. There's a hidden cost as well if you're planning to use this traveling so one of the things that has been heavily pushed is the idea that this will have an airplane mode, so to speak, uh, where in theory you will be able to transit at very high speeds 
obviously not driving a vehicle, but uh, on a, you know, a bus or a plane or, you know, a passenger of something and be able to have this headset on and be able to enjoy it. In particular, it's heavily implied it's a plane as the example. Now, um, the important thing to remember here is you don't have headphones on. You don't have earbuds, you don't have AirPods or earbuds or anything like that in, in this system. And the only truly integrated latency, as low latency as possible, they, I think they even try to suggest it has like no latency, but it's extremely low latency, is the AirPods Pro Model 2. The AirPods Pro 2, specifically the one with USB-C connection, the one with USB-C connection, the AirPods Pro 2. And, uh, because it has a special extra chip or they modified the chip to allow it to communicate directly with the AVP and it allows it to have that near lossless audio that's perfect in every way, etc. Now, that all has to be examined and reviewed and I don't have a pair of those earbuds. So when I first get this set up, I won't be using them and I'll probably be okay because I'm not planning to go on a plane anytime soon, which is good. So, Yeah. So I bought an AVP. <laughs> but let's be serious here for a minute. If you are a traveler and you have dreams of using this thing, because the Quest 3 is useless on a plane because the entire interface keeps moving away from you, due to its, I think what the deal is, the accelerometers inside, when you're traveling at hundreds of miles an hour, they basically, it doesn't know what to do and it basically leaves the menu behind you and you have to keep opening it over and over and over again and it keeps flying away from you. And even when you're moving, it gives you a hard time. It says you're too far away from the controllers, even the controllers in your hands. It has menu errors and such. This should not have that, especially if they do support an airplane mode for you to enjoy your content. Now, there's a couple things here. Aside from the AirPod Pro 2s that you would be using or something else that's more lost, has more... Uh, latency, which creates loss um, in, in its setup, and it's less elegant audio solutions, but you're going to want something because you otherwise have little speakers that are pumping out audio and everyone around you is going to hear what you're, you're watching. So if you're watching a movie, they're going to hear your movie, etc. Um, the other thing to remember is that airplanes usually have no signals heading out of the, not heading out of the headset other than things like Bluetooth and such and Wi-Fi. They specifically turn off some of the technologies on board your uh, portable device. And this brings up some interesting questions about the AVP in motion. I want to test myself, and this is something I actually will be testing, is if you're sitting as a passenger, as a passenger, keyword here, um, and, you're, and, you're, and you're moving, does it work in its normal capacity? Or is there a special mode you have to switch on that turns off the GPS and maybe some other signal devices, and then it'll allow it to work? That means that you'll have a limited capacity in some ways for some of the technologies that you may want when you're moving. So if, for example, you're on a 20-hour bus trip or something, and you want to be able to just view what your status is, like where you're at or sites along the way, Having that GPS having to be turned off so the system will work is a major detriment to your usage of the device. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm not saying even Apple suggested that. But I am saying that the airplane mode means... <laughs> I, I just hope it's not limited to airplane mode that you can be in a moving, moving, moving vehicle. I think that we need to start having this honest discussion where you need to acknowledge that you will not use this while you're driving, et cetera, et cetera, because you literally can't see. And if the device turns off or bugs out or something, you physically cannot see through the device. It's not a pass-through device, so to speak, in the sense of there's a glass in front of you and a projector shooting at it. It's physically a pair of cam, sorry, four cameras pointed outwards and multiple other sensors providing you inputs on what's outside of you and then projecting it onto, your, onto little screens in front of your eyes. If the system fails for any reason, you no longer have sight. So... That's something that we need to really clarify. And it, they, in, the, in the very advertising that you see when you, when you check this out or the articles you watch or the YouTube videos you check out, um, one of the things you're going to notice is like it looks really cool and you almost see eyes or you see some crazy lights and maybe there's something. 
that's just for outside. That's just for show. What you're actually going to see is going to be beautiful. I'm not, I'm not saying it's not, but I want you to, em, I want to emphasize that that external view that you're seeing is all a screen. So those colorful lights, the person inside that headset is not seeing those colorful lights. Those eyes that it's projecting may actually be real eyes. Yeah, sure. It's, it's a little wild to me, but yeah, it's there. But to me, as a VR user, once again, uh, it's added heat. That's all heat. I'd rather have that screen off most of the time, unless I'm trying to impress somebody who's just checking it out for you know the first time or something. And I hope I can turn that screen either down in brightness or physically off because that'll save me some battery life and that'll save me some heat generation on that frontal screen that's running. And yes, that screen I'm sure uses a far less juice than the extremely bright screens that are inside the headset. And while I'm at that, the, the this headset will not hurt your eyes if you have relatively normal vision i would say no no i'm no health expert i'm no health expert but um when you see the big numbers attached to this it's not like your television or your monitor in front of you um 5000 nits etc it is not enough brightness because um it has to pass through some crazy lenses that basically take away a lot of that light it scatters the light it plays games with the light and you need that brightness to do the job so just understand that when they actually do the calculations for an HMD headset that you're running, um, you want the brightness. Brightness is good, and it doesn't have to be that bright all the time. It doesn't have to be a pure white panel in front of you. Where it's like the brightest color um, in front of you at all times. That's just peak. Um, so just keep that in the back of your mind, too, that these headsets are in a truly unique position. And in particular, the AVP was being one of the most, it is the most powerful processing consumer grade equipment you can get your hands on. And I, I would argue that the best one that I, that I would want to get my hands on anyway. So there you go. You can turn the video off. But now um, what, what I would say is keep these things in the back of your mind. And um, the well, if you're not familiar with my videos, this video is as much for me as it is for you. Um, I, I've already gone through this process and I'm hoping that you get something out of it. I'm hoping that you experience that. And I hope uh, this in, in, it creates some discussion. So if you have questions in the comments about what did you mean by that? What did what, well, you went a little too far with that, but what did, I think you got a point on this. You want to elaborate, please reach out to me at the comments below or reach out to me on discord, reach out to me on Reddit, etc. You can reach out to me in private or you know, on, on here. Um, and uh, what I'd like to hear is basically, where is your mindset at? Did you decide to pick one up? Did you decide not to? Are you on the fence still? And what, in particular for the fence sitters, what is the thing that would like really set you in the right track either way? And I want to stress to those who are not able to make this decision due to their budget, due to the fact that, you know, this this is such a wild technology, I wouldn't worry too much. Very, very soon, this type of technology will be in everyone's hands. I firmly believe that this type of technology is too valuable and it will be seen as something that is powerful and is useful for many. And it may not be sitting in your house in the next year or two. Maybe not. Um, unless it's your choice to uh, spend that kind of money on it. But you will highly likely see these things starting to pop up in training environments at work or in schools and colleges and such in high schools. Slowly but surely, I think these type of technologies will slowly go out the door. You have these early adopter phases, and I, I truly believe, I, I don't think the next thing out the door is going to be the you know everybody throws around the idea of the five hundred dollar headset the five hundred dollar version of this amazing technology i don't think that's the case but i do think that there will be some type of highly publicized subsidized program for edu and for commercial side that tries to like push that angle and gets people excited about it and uh i think if if that if if that happens I don't think even the hardware is going to be what justifies it. <laughs> Strangely, I think it'll be the apps. 
So if this, if this technology gets enough traction and enough developers are willing to take their really powerhouse apps that are like in the top 100 free and top 100 paid apps and, you know, all that, um, and they slowly bring them over to the AVP, whether kicking and screaming or excitedly, either way, um, it really doesn't matter. It matters that they're there. Um, then all of a sudden there's a there's a heartbeat to this community that's going to grow and grow and grow like the Grinch's heart. <laughs> Eventually, I think even the most staunch folks that are against it will at the very least be reinforced in their beliefs or more likely I think they'll understand that it it's not a perfect technology. It's not really meant for everybody. I get it, but for most people, they're going to see a value at least in 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 their in their workplace in their in their in their education, etc. And possibly even at home. And that's okay. It's okay if you're not if you're not a fan of this test type of stuff. Um, this is not a fad. This is not a pair of three D head, head uh, glasses that you wear in front of a TV. Um, this is unfortunately something that's a solo experience for now, at least at the local level. Um, I do expect to have the equivalent of modern day land parties where people show up with these headsets, especially as they get cheaper and uh, more common which is, once again, I hope that happens. I want that to happen. I want this to be a success so there is a bright future for everyone to appreciate these type of tech capability and can embrace it. And why? Why do I want it to work? And why do I think an iPad, a fancy iPad, as some people keep stamping that mantra, why do I think it's important? Well, because it's not just an iPad. So an M2 chip and 16 gigs of RAM, and an R1 fancy chip that makes the light work as fast as possible to your eyes from where the renders. It's all great. But yes, it is not the most modern technology. If you look at the stats page of that dang headset, comparing it to a MacBook Pro or something like that, or anything on the PC side that's in that kind of pricing category, you're gonna, you would laugh it out of the field. You'd say, at best, it's an iPad Pro on steroids, at best. And that's, you're going to hate me. I'm going to say it again. That's okay. Because it's not an iPad form factor. The key here is that even an, a mighty iPad or iPad Pro, et cetera, that's, that's well-built and well-equipped, is an incredible, powerful tool. But at the end of the day, you're peering into it like a, like a porthole on the side of a ship, desperately trying to get a view of what's inside. You're just, you're just staring into a tiny little rectangle. And at the end of the day, that headset is not limited in that capacity. There's going to be multiple screens of rendering. And no, they're not all going to be 40K HD, 4K high definition by, on steroids, etc. at first. But... Multiple screens means multiple different processes that can run in a manageable way where you can have these things operating in different places and you can pick them up like real items and you can use your gestures or your controls of whatever choices that like we talked about earlier and physically move them around. And am I 100% accurate in how I'm describing this? Probably not but I'm going to test the heck out of it on this very channel. And I'm telling you, I hope you're around to see the other end of this because I'm going to have fun with this. I'm actually going to bring this, these, some of this at least, little clips of it. I'm not going to put you guys through everything again. The, the, the kind of men and women who bother to give me a chance, I'm not going to put them through 30 minutes of me talking about my predictions. But I will try to highlight the, the, the best parts of it, good and bad, and try to compare it to what we got. So I, I, I hope that once again, if you're a fence sitter or you're you're a person who's a VR diehard or you're you're a layman or somewhere in between, and you're just curious, I, I'll gladly answer those questions. And testing, 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 and seeing this experience is going to be great. But more importantly, I think it's the first time we'll actually have a true spatial computer a system that's got the volume of an entire room at its disposal and you can pick it up and go anywhere with it. That's, that's the dream right there to be able to bring virtual items to reality and be able to take 
things that don't exist and make them just as real as, as the very items in front of you, just as real as the television in front of you, just as real as the computer screen in front of you is rendering out things and be able to take it anywhere you want and make the reality you want to see, what you want to do at any given time. That is a superpower right there. And if this thing even completes half of what is it promised, it's going to be incredible. And it will exponentially get better. I'm not even going to cry if they release something in the next 12 months after it that's infinitely better and dirt cheap. I hope they do. Because I want everyone to be able to experience the magic that is bringing virtual to reality. And... I hope that I'm here for it, you know, um, so to be able to document it and enjoy it. And, uh, that's, that's about it on this one. Also, uh, shout out to anybody. If you heard me mention VR chat earlier, if you, if you know me from there, Hey, if you know me, uh, from the other VR games, glad to see you here. Thanks for coming by. All right. That's it for now. Thank you to the couple people who checked this out. Have a good one.